all, it's Agnes from Just a Perfect Piece coming to you with another super fun project that I actually collected the materials with you this morning and uh, the whole idea was actually sent to me by one of my followers and uh, I would like to go ahead and do that uh, project. So as you can see is I do have those green wooden uh, frames from Dollar Tree that I'm trying to dismantle. And of course, I, I only need the frames and I do have some Jenga blocks. I do have the wooden dowels, obviously some hot glue, obviously scissors and most likely a paint because um, somehow I need to paint this. So let's have fun. So I think my frames are ready to work and I do, of course, in order, I mean, I forgot to mention, but I'm positive you already know, I'm trying to create a tiny lantern that I'm going to use one of those twinkling lights that I also picked with you. So here is my the, the spray adhesive that I uh, bought, obviously, at the uh, Dollar Tree too, but obviously the spray is not working, so I am going to decide to, you know, I, I have to use the uh, paintbrush. So I'm going to assemble this and who knows how long is that going to uh, dry. So I am going to do that first and then move on to another project. Deciding which way you want to go your frames to uh, together, well, it was not uh, that easy uh, decision. But I finally made my decision. I'm finally going to uh, put my paintbrush into use and paint the sides and put the frame together. So it seems like my uh, frames are sort of holding together. They might not really the strongest, but you know, yet, because most likely the glue is wet. So I'm working on my dowels. And of course I do want to create those little crisscross. And now look at me using a tools to create my little crosses around. And of course they overlap and it's not going to be easy to glue them together. So I need to most likely figure out some kind of cuts actually couple ideas that I had at the beginning I said I'm going to make a little notch and in the middle and try to see if it works and it does sort of work but I just do not want to compromise and it does look good but uh, for now that's what I'm going to leave so why don't I just keep cutting as you notice is um, I was afraid to cut it through and um, so I'm using the sandpaper to um, smooth all my cuts and you know trying to figure out my way around and again I am learning in this whole process so I hope you're going to learn from me but I have to tell you that I did not end up uh, going that route but you're going to see that later. But for now, look at me, I'm trying to use my metal cutter, I'm trying to use my scissors and sand them with the sandpaper to make sure that they are not sharp. I'm learning my way around, trying to figure out as much as I can what I can possibly do. But for now, I'm only just cutting the longer pieces and then we'll deal with the other ones later. It is so funny to see myself being so busy cutting all those pieces, but you know what? It didn't take really long time once, once I figure out my way around it. So what I was doing as I was cutting actually around my, uh, my dowels in half to go with the original plan without having really a notches as I've done in the first one, I've noticed that some of the ends were just simply splitting by themselves. So that actually gave me a good idea that I can cut this in half and create those little crosses on two of the little windows, little um, frames. Um, we're just simply cutting the ones that I'm already doing it again in half. I'm telling you, I'm learning as I go. See, I just try right now, um, you know, that way because it is for sure much easier. And the reason why I do want to only make the crosses on, on those sides, on the, on the smaller sides, is because I do want to have access to my candle not only from the top because i do have a different plan for the top but i do want to be able to you know get my fingers to squeeze something through that tiny two by three frame uh, from the side so i'm going to do it on the wider sides um, one cross and then on the uh, the smaller side i am going to do two but one of them is going to be cut in half 
So as you can see is forget about the notches as I originally planned. I cut the ones that I've cut in half and I'm going to slightly glue to the side of it. But I know uh, they may actually fall through. So I do have another plan for that too. And I'm actually very pleased with this. So why don't I just install these? See, they look pretty good. I'm getting better in cutting. Sometimes it does happen that when you are doing the project, you know, things may not go the way you want it. So you always have to listen to your project and try to figure out how can you improve it. But I do know at the end of the day that I did truly enjoy this project and I will be making for sure one more because I do want to have uh, a pair. And of course, now I learn how to do it. So now it's going to be for sure much uh, easier. And I really hope that that help you uh, to, you know, not to go the circles I went through. So now it's time to mix the uh, paint to paint those dowels. You don't really have to. I actually love the sage uh, shade of green, but you know what? I'm going to because I do want to actually slightly distress it so it's not all um, one color. So as you notice, it's again the uh, apple barrel paint. I think that was English ivy, my favorite shade of green with a little bit of the white, uh, of course, apple barrel. And then I'm just simply mixing in and, and, you know, trying this on my dowel to see if this is the shade that it's there. And of course, afterwards, I will for sure highlight a little bit with brown. So let's have fun. It is not, you know, the same shade of green as the frame. And I really, truly love the color of the frames, but it's getting close. And of course, my paint is a little bit darker. But you know what? It's not really about getting the shade. It's about me making a slightly a different statement, close in the same sort of a palette. But as I mentioned earlier, I am going to, um, you know, highlight it slightly with the uh, brown. Of course, I have to remind myself not to forget about my tips. They have to be painted too. So for now, the paint can go on the side and we need to work on the base. You really do not have to make the base because you can simply go over the candle, a tiny, the, the, uh, the twinkle candle, you can get battery operated at the uh, Dollar Tree. But um, I do want to have one. Um, so I decided to use put my Jenga block into use and build a little um, uh, floor for my lantern. But before I actually can um, hot glue them together, I need to figure out how big I want, how many Jenga blocks I need to use. My goal is to simply have a little, you know, lip on one side, but hopefully have a nicely and flushed on the, uh, the narrow side. But of course, now look at me trying to figure out if I can have them flush all over, but obviously it, it may not work because obviously I'm not going to be cutting Jenga blocks. Even though I do have that little, there's no way I'm cutting it. So it's got to go the, the other way. So uh, as I originally uh, decided. So here we go. That's going to work now. I'm adding a couple more. So it seems like that's it. So now I need to put the uh, hot glue together and glue them. That's simple and easy. both sides are glued now we need to put them together hopefully they're going to be sort of even but that's okay we are making a rustic one and it's again as i always say it even if it doesn't work it's very easy to take them apart and um and you know glue them again to make sure they're easy so now i better get a better brush because i do want to make it a little bit united and i am going to um you know paint this all um jenga blacks one colors obviously i do have two different shades
So now this is sort of semi-dry and it's time to highlight a little bit of my dowels that I painted um, with the brown and obviously make sure that they're still sort of on the wet side. But I am actually really happy with how they turn out. And then of course, highlight slightly my little base for my uh, lantern and I guess we are going to be very soon done. Do you see what I'm just bringing? I'm bringing again the leftover cut out pieces of rope that I would like to wrap around about around my connections. Do you see what I'm doing? I told you I'm going mask it, but uh, it is for sure easier. Nothing is pushing on a frame. And um, that's what my goal is. Put a little bit of the hot glue and wrap the crosses. Of course, I've tried first with the uh, bow, but obviously it sticks out. It's not going to work. <laughs> so here I go to my original plan, wrapping it all around. As you notice, I am only using the hot glue right at the beginning and right at the end and trying to make sure that I have a um, tight connection. And of course, my little cutouts um, <laughs> that I was doing are not as visible. But for sure, I'll, uh, I'll work on the second one uh, much different. But it's, it's, yeah, I'm learning and hope you are learning too. So now it's time to uh, finally distress a little bit uh, my uh, base and um, obviously hot glue it to the, uh, the lantern and maybe try to figure out what we can do uh, handle-wise. A little bit of the hot glue, always <laughs> doesn't hurt. And here I go. I think we are done with this portion. Man, I'm so happy. We made it and actually looks pretty cool. The picture really doesn't show much of a justice, but it does, trust me, look good. So now what I've done is I cut a little bit of the wire and I wrap my leftover um, rope that I was actually uh, using for the sides of my um, lantern. And I'm going to simply clip them right on the side where um, the backing of each frame was there and um, we are done. I have to tell you, it was a little bit of a tricky process because I first have to put a little bit of, uh, uh, of the hot glue under that little clip and then attach my piece of the wire with the rope on it and then obviously uh, slap it, snap it back um, right there to make sure that it goes nowhere. So, but it's, it is doable, it is working. And it does look at this i can pick it up it's working oh i'm so proud of myself <laughs> okay so now we gotta add a little bit something something on the side you know me i am all about the rope and about something obviously i can't bring the lace here or satin so i don't want to bring raffia <laughs> i don't want to bring moss so i'm going to go again and simply tie a loose uh one loop uh, bow on the side and most likely plant one of the flowers that we can interchange with um, with the decoration. So 
that's it. Now here is my twinkle light that I just picked up with you this morning on my way out and I would have actually not get them. I'm going to plant them in there and they do work. I actually not a big fan of that yellow, but uh, I'm positive I'll find something on Amazon that I will like. And here is the little flower that we made, uh, sort of a sunflower we made earlier few months ago by now so i for sure will add the direction to this flower you can find it yourself and it's time to make some pictures so here it is the little lantern that we just made uh together i have to tell you i learn a lot and i know the second one i am going to be making it is going to be for sure much easier and a bit better looking but i am actually completely happy so i really hope that i inspired you to go to dollar tree and get yourself those little frames and make one for yourself and uh again thanks for watching and don't forget to sprinkle that's important thanks again bye